let's take a look at the utility and risk preferences for different types of investors. You can have a risk averse investor and that person is going to exhibit diminishing marginal utility of wealth. That means that as their wealth increases their utility or their satisfaction increases but at a decreasing rate. So going from having one dollar in wealth to two dollars in wealth brings you more extra satisfaction or more extra utility than going from twenty thousand dollars to twenty thousand and one dollars in wealth. You can have a risk neutral investor. This is a person who exhibits constant marginal utility of wealth. This is the case where when you get a one dollar increase in wealth you get the same increase in utility. So going from one to two dollars is the same as going from a hundred thousand to a hundred thousand and one dollars. You get the same increase in your t utility or your satisfaction. And then you have the risk lover. The risk lover is the person who exhibits increasing marginal utility of wealth. This is the person who actually gets more utility as they get wealthier. So a pers this person goes from having one dollar to having two dollars, they actually get more utility if they go from a hundred thousand to a hundred thousand and one dollar. So let's take a look at an example. It might be easier to understand and explain this. So consider a gamble where an investor has a 50% chance of winning $50,000 and a 50% chance of winning $150,000. The expected dollar value of this gamble is just the expected value of these uh, two possible outcomes, so 50% times 50,000 plus 50% 50 times 150,000. So the expected dollar value of the gamble is $100,000. So if we look at a risk-averse investor, this blue line is their utility function. And so at each level of wealth, they have a certain level of utility or satisfaction. So at 50,000, they have a certain level of utility. At 100,000, they have a higher level of utility. At 150,000, they have a, an even higher level of utility. And you can see that going from 50 to 100 increased utility by this amount, but going from 100 to 150 increased utility by a smaller amount. That's the decreasing marginal utility of wealth. That is, the first $50,000 increase, or the, fifth, the increase from 50 to 100, gave them a greater jump in satisfaction than going from 100 to 150. Now, I've put in these numbers 50, 100, and 150 because they represent the gamble um, and the expected value of the gamble. So if you look at this red dashed line here, this shows us the utility they get from gambling. And in this case, because the expected value of the gamble is 100,000, we can draw up to this curve or this dashed line and draw across, this would be their level of utility. What we see is, is that it's lower than the 100,000 with certainty. So given a choice, this person would rather have a 100,000 with certainty than taking the gamble of 50% chance of getting 50,000 or 50% 50 chance of getting 150,000. So the, the utility from the certainty of 100,000 is greater than the uh, expect or utility from taking the gamble from the expected value of the 100,000. Okay, we can actually quantify this in a way. And let me show you another graph here. What this graph does is we've drawn across from this 100,000. Okay, the expected value of the gamble, we draw it across horizontally until we just hit the utility function. And here, let's say it's 90,000. So basically, this person, we call this the certainty equivalent, would rather have 90,000 with certainty 
okay, or what gets the same utility of 90,000 with certainty as they do with 100,000 from the gamble of 50% chance of getting 50,000 or 50% 50 chance of getting $150,000. So this person might be willing to pay $10,000 in order to assure themselves of getting 90,000. Okay, they they don't want to take the gamble. They're not willing to take the risk. Okay, let's compare that to the risk neutral investor. They have a straight line utility function, and so you can see that because there's no curvature, no bowing, that the utility of the certain hundred thousand is also the same as the utility of the expected value of the gamble. This is a person who doesn't really care about the risk that's involved. They only care about the expected value. The expected value is 100,000 with certainty. The expected value is $100,000 on the gamble. They don't care. They will take either. They're indifferent between the two. And then the final case is where you have somebody who's a risk lover. In the case of a risk lover, they exhibit this increasing marginal utility of wealth. So the curve goes this way. And what you can see is is that the 100,000 with certainty actually gives them less utility than the 100, 000, the expected $100,000 they get from taking the gamble. So this is a kind of person who wants to take the gamble. And there there are examples of this usually at lower levels of wealth, but people who play the lottery, the expected value is negative. People who go to the horse, uh, to the racetrack and bet on horses exhibit some risk-loving behavior. So this is the case where I'd rather take the gamble than the certain, uh, the certain amount. Okay, I'd rather go to Las Vegas and take the chance of, you know, 50% chance that I I lose a hundred dollars uh, and fifty percent chance that I, you know, win a hundred dollars, than to take the certainty of just doing nothing. And it's actually not fifty-fifty. So these are people who would rather take the gamble than to um, take the certain amount. So they exhibit different kinds of behavior. And again, we see this example in certain kinds of behavior, but usually at smaller levels of wealth. So actually the utility function might be bowed upward this way, curving this way, at low levels of wealth, and then showing diminishing marginal utility of wealth at higher levels of wealth. So this gives you an idea of why some people take a gamble and why some people don't. And in fact, if we sort of scroll back here to the risk-averse individual. This is why people buy insurance, because the expected value, uh, the utility they get from the expected value isn't as good as the certainty. Okay, They'd rather pay this amount for insurance in order to assure that they'll get $90,000. Okay, So there's, a, there's an argument in finance for things like insurance uh, and why people need to be rewarded more and more for taking on extra risk.